welcome back to Morning Thailand and still with you to live and golf. And um, we're gonna go straight to the news. Mm -hmm. The first news of this break will involve fire. Right. And the second news also <coughs> involve fire. fire. But the, <laughs> the first one, no one died. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, t about the around the same time that van kids were arrested, right? <laughs> they were also uh, fired at Saha Farm um, store restroom mm -hmm. in Robbury province. Mm -hmm. the, this company, in this one in particular, just uh, was in the news last week, right? Because there was a big um, protest, not protest, a mob mm -hmm. from the. A foreign employee, right? Almost like a foreign union going on forming yeah, there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, they owe the wage of about two months to mm. all this um, withholding pays. Huh? Yeah, for about about a month and a half to two months, they haven't paid their employees, and there were a threat that, that they will put this factory on fire. So and on and on mm -hmm. but last week just the, at the end of the week we heard the news that uh, Saha Farm just they talked it out they talk it now mm -hmm. but at the end of the day they closed down they announced they do close down a section that uh, employed all these foreign employees mm. so there was a big news about that so it's come the Saturday night um, when the fire broke out um, the they need they used 14 fire truck uh, and they able to uh, have the fire contained within four hours, but the police still cannot identify the cause of the fire. But it's happened at the storage room at the started where they storage pieces of chicken for export. Um, initiate estimate the damage probably about thirty million baht. They said uh, there are two possible causes, either arson or the electric circuit short. Mm. Is there anything else besides arson and electric circuit short? I mean, it cannot be anything else. Right. But <laughs> the thing is, I, I think they probably, I don't know, speculate other stuff like bombs. I don't know. No, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's still uh, under investigation, but uh, the uh, the arson, the possible of arson, because mm -hmm. they got a threat from the former employee before when they were having dispute going on. But they said they're able to talk it out mm -hmm. and uh, come down with terms. But this thing happened, so we're probably gonna hear more when they're, they're able to find more information about right. the Right. Now moving on to another um, fire that broke out. This one in particular is quite sad due to the fact that um, it involved four um, people that were killed. Now this particular incident happened in uh, Sainoi of Nontaburi province. And what happened is um, there has been a fire that broke out at the police station at about 4 a.m. of uh, Saturday. Now, this is uh, of yesterday, excuse me, and of course this particular um, arson, not arson, excuse me, because this point they haven't, they're not sure, they're thinking that it might be electrical short circuits or um, it might happen from maybe some kind of uh, spark that happens and is kind of expanded into the evidence room. However, um, in this particular incident, there were four inmates in the police station at the time and is very unfortunate due to the fact that um, the policemen said that at the time when the fire when they have heard this particular explosion a loud noise and they heard something exploded next to the um, the evidence room which is situated next to the room that has all these inmates, uh, all four inmates, um, has been captured in there. Now they say that after um, they have heard this loud noise, the police tried his best um, at the time to uh, put down the fire. However, it has expanded so fast and so quick that um, even from trying to actually uh, get this fire under control, he in you know, in the during the time, ended up hurting himself um, in his arms, so on and so forth. However, as you can see in the picture there, 
the family, the relatives, as well as friends uh, of the inmates were not very happy, and they don't understand why are there no help for their loved mm. ones that has been um, put into this particular police station. But don't forget, um, we have talked about this Kuntulip, a little bit earlier there, mm -hmm. that most people that has been put into the this cell. particular cell um, normally are not yet determined to be yeah. wrong. Some of them, most of the case, if it's the sale at the uh, precinct, it will be like they cannot make the bell yet or it's in between the night, um, mm -hmm. the, the, all the official hour is off, so they have to wait until the next day to process further documentation and things like that. So most of the time, the p people that captured in sales at any precincts will in between mm -hmm. and not really have any charges mm -hmm. and this particular case Kuntulip um, it just to show you the severity of this particular fire it took an hour for seven fire trucks to put it down and the thing is is next to the evidence room which mm. have they say that they have a motorcycle that has been underneath that room as well mm -hmm. so it might expand it and you know hit the motorcycle the fuel or the gas that the motorcycle actually holds probably ignited even further so at this point they say that they will investigate the police that were actually on the shift at the time as well as trying to see what else can they do because obviously relatives and friends are not very happy yeah, I heard um, there are some police officers trying to help already and they got themselves burned too. Exactly. And uh, I think as of this yesterday, it's just very the police unfortunate. came out and said they will, uh, re I cannot use the word reimburse, rehab, mm -hmm. rehabilitate the family with some kind of expense help. Right. So, you know, let's, let's just hope that this doesn't happen again because obviously this is not something that anyone wanted but i think the police tried their best already at the time but that's all they could do so you know hopefully nothing like that would happen again right next news mm -hmm. no fired but not, not it doesn't happy. mean it is any better mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of you probably seen the video clip that has been viral on sunday yesterday mm -hmm. but this incident happened since uh what happened with saturday night why did so many things happen on saturday night i don't know but this weekend has been quite rough i have to say it's, yeah, so it's not a very good like it's hard for me to pick news to be cheerful yeah the, the medals we that's have, the only we, news we that tried. i could come up with we have tried mm -hmm. anyway on saturday night this incident happened on saturday night but the story broke out just yesterday mm -hmm. um apparently there was a american uh expat mm -hmm. that got killed mm -hmm. by a taxi driver right in sukumwit road just uh, around Sukhumvit 68. Mm -hmm. So uh, the police that able to find the footage of CCTV camera, what happened was, and also asking the witness, what happened was um, they saw this uh, passenger came out of the taxi and they have some kind of quarrel going on, like uh, just you know, throwing words to each other. And this taxi driver came out of the car grab a long knife or some people will call it sword for about half it's a meter long it's that long that is yes. gotta be a sword and just you know fight with um his passenger the thing is the guy died at the scene mm -hmm. this um 50 years old american expat named troy lee pilkington um, so yesterday afternoon, finally, the police able to arrest this taxi driver because uh, they able to identify him from the uh, the taxi, uh, mm -hmm. the license the, plate. The, the license plate. Mm -hmm. So they caught the taxi driver at his apartment in Bangkok, along with evidence which are his taxi, the pink taxi his blue shirt and his um, shoes that have blood stain on it. So the guy said this uh, American expat held his cap from Bang Na and um, wants to come to his, his uh, apartment in Sukhumvit 85. 
but uh, along the way they have a fight a little bit because the American mm. passenger said that the taxi has cheated the meter mm -hmm. so he got out of the car this is what the taxi driver said the American guy get out of the car throw a cup of coffee into his face and walk away not intend to pay mm -hmm. so he tried to ask for the uh, taxi fees which is only 51 baht right and he got really mad so mm -hmm. he grabbed the, the sword and he said the guy fight back so he so he just you know fought back with mm -hmm. the sword and he didn't think he's gonna kill him but I guess when the anger get into your I head know. and it's you just couldn't stop it's 51 baht people yeah I and mean, the thing is I don't think you're supposed to have a sword in the car in the car so right now currently uh, the guy is charged with um, of course killing other people mm -hmm. and also having um, possession of, possession of um, <sighs> weapons mm -hmm. in public space mm -hmm. in in the public place mm -hmm. so I guess there are so many evidence and he right. also confessed to the crime mm -hmm. so yeah. So be be very careful. I'm not saying that, you know, it should be the passengers who try to avoid this. But the thing is, you know, when times comes, you never know what other people have. And the thing is to get into a taxi and, you know, you're pretty vulnerable already to have someone else driving you. So um, if anything else, um, don't get too upset and very I would, quickly. I, and I, I think... The police would probably try to make sure that the the taxi drivers are a lot less what should we say armed they shouldn't be armed yeah i mean yeah but then you know in things the could go sense, the other way in the too, common sense shouldn't be armed mm -hmm. he's not police officer he's not military he's not a guard of a bank mm -hmm. he shouldn't be armed right but all in all taxi cab fares from Bang Na to Sukhum with 68, 51 baht is not a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't think, it doesn't sound like a cheating meter, 51 mm -hmm. baht for that amount of distance. But then again, you know, we, we have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Because this is the thing. We just heard from what the driver said. Yes. Not the passenger. Maybe he didn't, he wasn't from Bang Na. Maybe he was, you know, somewhere closer. Yeah, and so the passenger it could be anything. was killed. Exactly. So, um, to another news, I'm not going to be cheerful, very unfortunate, this particular um, news um, is actually, I even though it's not cheerful, I think it's still uh, a good uh, congratulate to the police. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, we have heard a lot about drug trafficking within the city as well as our country as a whole and around the border. Apparently, there has been a big drug lord that even the Interpol as well as the Myanmar government are looking for, and he is Lieutenant Colonel Yi Se. Now, he, if you have heard of his name, um, his drug lord. Um, na this particular dark lord named Yise. Now, he has been quite well known in terms of trafficking all the drugs. Um, they have been said that as of yesterday, um, the police has confiscated 51,600 of the methamphetamine pills around mm -hmm. Rojana um, Industrial Estate, which is in the Utia province, of course, along with the .38 caliber guns and other types of armed guns, as well as a vest um, and three um, kits of, tr of using for this particular methamphetamine pills. Now, um, the police have said that this particular arrest actually expanded from the arrest that they took place on Friday, where they confiscated 500,000 of methamphetamine pills, 10 kilograms of ice mm -hmm. as well, and these are all about 300 million baht in total okay. um, for this particular um, arrest. Now they say that um, at this case they have been able to arrest it, um, a man who, this particular man, now um, they say that Okun Pakapong, excuse me, 
Um, let me get his name straight here. Um, at this point, Som Pong Kiel Pra In. Now, he has been one of the main person that trafficking the drugs around. They believe that this particular place at Rojana area is just a transition place where they look, uh, you know, waiting for the drugs to be distributed elsewhere. Now, um, Kern, Lieutenant Colonel Yi Se is believed to be um, smuggling drugs mm. from Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Mae Hong Son, which is the northern part of Thailand, and keep it at uh, Ayutthaya, Ang Thong, Lopuri, Patum Thani, and Supanburi before they distribute it into different places mm -hmm. around Bangkok. Mm -hmm. So at this point, um, the Interpol as well as Myanmar government has already um, put a reward of 5 million baht if anyone could actually give us location or give them a location mm -hmm. of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Yi Se. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And at this point, they believe that he is at Ta Ki Lake of Chiang Rai province. However, of course, the police will actually have to look more into this because this is one of the biggest drug ring ever and it's involved international um, help cooperation because Interpol are actually looking for this particular person as I, well. I heard his name floating around for a long mm -hmm. while already. Uh, hopefully it's coming pretty close. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to take a short break. Yes. And we'll come back with um, the news that has been going on floating around for probably over a month already. Yeah. The scandalous monk or some newspaper will call Dead Set Monk. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> another interesting news that broke out over the weekends, the sound clip the mysterious sound clip. So please stay tuned. <laughs>